What's up, man? How you do? Send it, send it, send it, send it. About to do your magic. Yeah, man. <laughs> What it was rubbing up against? Oh, the uh, the cost bolt. Yeah, this part, right? Oh, that. Okay, yeah, that ain't no big thing. It was real close, like a lot or a little bit. Nah, we just wait till we get it in. Got other rims in here. St. Clair's finest on the tow. Yeah, man, I'm about to get this thing together. Suspension, coilovers all the way around. How you, how, how you like the Rick Ross? Oh man, I love it. Mm hmm. You got that red yeah, six four. Like it. it was fun. I liked it. I just wanted to come up there by the other cars. They ain't let us up there. That was it. Yeah, that's kind of cake right there. How they got it separated. Yeah. If you really you know, you want to be a part of the show, I know I do. Right. Yeah, the main car. The main cars were the cars we couldn't even walk by <clears throat> unless you had a pass. Building. Go on here and pull this thing on in the shit stop. This thing in the building, 72 Impala, Vert, Candy. Even the bumper guards, Candy. Smell wet too. Yeah, he was saying that the skirt was rubbing up against the tire, so I might do a little adjustment on the in, inner part of the skirt just so it don't rub on the skirt, don't rub and mess up the. The strips on the tire, or whatever. I'll take care of that. It's a nice car, though. I say the rat chrome in this joint. 
dash pad wrapped. That look good, stitched up. <laughs> Gold Dayton's. Yeah, man. Got to go and get this thing together. About to strip it. All that old stock 50 year old suspension. Stuff about to come off. Got the Vogies, two front rims. I don't know, what's it? Oh, the knockoffs. Wrench. Daytons. Knockoffs. Yeah, man. Got the hammer. A hammer. I am. At least you got a new one. This mug's a little heavier than the old ones. That's good. What's up, Lou? Yeah, it's mug hard, ain't it? About to bust this whole front end down, put him on a lift, put him down. Coil over front and back, Global West upper and lower control arms, Viking double adjustable coil overs, um, center link, inner outer tie rod sleeves, uh, what they call them things, ball joints, um, stabilizer links. And then I'm going to refurbish his, um, not refurbish for real, but I'm going to um, sand it and uh, put some new bushings on this um, sway bar. And shoot, that would be about it. And then the idle arm, too, we're changing that, too. So all pretty much all the front suspension parts, turning parts and stuff, that be getting changed on the car. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Yeah, man, we about to go on and get him together, knock this joint out. Yep, there's another one in the shop. About to get ready to strip down, finish, put back together, hit the streets, make a video. You know what I'm saying? So that'll be hard. Yeah, 24 months all gold stack of days. About to put them joints on, get him together. Like I say, put all brand new front suspension. Get that joint done, man. You know what I'm saying? Another one of that special vehicles that's going to be in and out. I'm looking good. Keep on bringing them, man. We're going to get y'all together. Whatever suspension work y'all want to do. If y'all know we sell all brands of rims, holler at us. You know what I'm saying? So any suspension work, any paint work, any music, we get you together. Boom. 72 Impala. Dump. About to go ahead and get this man car on this lift. Get it bust down. Got it up in the air. Getting ready to bust it on down. I see what he was talking about when the skirt was touching the tire a little bit. So I definitely got to make that right. But yeah, I'm about to bust this thing on down. All this stuff coming up off of here. All of it. Out with the old, in with the new. 50-year-old parts. About to get upgraded. You know what I'm saying? That's everything I'm putting on here. Center lane, inner, outer tie rod, sleeves, upper control arms, lower control arms, coilovers, uh, idle arm. Yeah, man, just all brand new stuff. Got to grease all them fitness and stuff. Make sure everything be... Long lasting. Yep, 72 and Paula Burt. Taking all this stuff off. It don't look too bad though. This car was taken care of regardless. But, like I say, out with the old and with the new. Got to start busting this thing on down. I'm getting ready. Clean it up. Then bam. Magic. Got this thing busted down. I just put this other arm on here right quick. I was testing off something. So I just got this on here. 
Still gotta get this off, but that ain't nothing. Yeah, hey, man, it's about Bucky naked. Caliber was just sitting up there. Yeah, hey, man, got this old stuff up off of there. Stuff is off. It's all the new stuff, upper control lines, lower control lines, the springs. You can see the coilovers in the biz ops. And everything I'm putting over here, the wrenches, for the coilover adjustment. Yeah, man, you see, some people sometimes don't think that it's important to change some stuff. You got man shoes. As long as I can get the car to ride or fit the rims, ain't nothing rubbing, you cool. But these be the reasons why you need to do stuff like this. Like, look. Look at these bushes, man. Old, wore out. Look at these upper control arm bushes. These little splitting and breaking. You know what I'm saying? So, you might be riding pretty decent, but the mug ain't riding as good as it really can ride. Alignment can't be a hundred. You might hit a bump and the car be shifted side to side like a, a hockey puck. You be having to change that type of stuff. What the other control on? Yeah, this one. Like, when I was looking at that bush is completely gone. Gone. You know what I'm saying? So you be riding like this, you be hearing little noises and stuff, you don't know where it's, you just look at it, you can't find it. Or you know what I'm saying, like I say, it be shifted like a hockey puck or something. You don't even be knowing what be going on because you're not willing to go this far. Or even if you don't even do tubular stuff or coilovers, even if you just changed all these bushings and all these arms and these cross shafts and stuff like that. If you did that, man, your car would be a whole lot better. But you got to think, man, this car, it's a 1972. This car is 52 years old. And some of that stuff, not to say this car, but some of this stuff don't never be changed. Then you got to look like at certain ball joints. Look, this is an original ball joint. Where's a screwdriver at so I can show y'all exactly what I'm talking about? Bear with me. You see that? That's a rivet. That's not a screw. That's a rivet. That means these are original ball joints. You don't see no screw hole on that. I wish I could have cleaned it off clearer for y'all to really see, but that's a rivet. That means these ball joints never been changed, ever. Anytime you see the rivets on the ball joint, that means the muzz are original. And it's a lot of cars that's riding around like that. I mean, you can have a low mile car, so that don't mean they always bad, but that just lets you know how old they are. So, you know what I'm saying? You want to have a good, comfortable riding car. You want to be confident in everything that you got going on with your car. You got to change stuff like that. Like I said, you ain't got to go this route even though this stuff better, but you could just uh, just change all the original bushings and stuff like that, ball joints, tie rods, all the, all the stuff that make a car a car. Then you have the confidence to know like, you ain't gotta worry about it. So if something do go wrong, you gonna know exactly what it is because you know you changed everything else. So it'd be easier to pinpoint a problem because you thoroughly know your car. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They just wanna strap some rims on, and, and that's it. But you gotta go these miles sometimes. You gotta, you gotta do this type of stuff in order to get the results that you really want. Cause you don't want to be. And it's another reason. Like I give all my customers options. I be like, hey, look, oh, you want to put these size rims on a car? Sixes, eights, thirties, thirty twos, fours, whatever. Oh yeah, um, I want to put this on my car. Oh, okay, man, look, well, this this the bare minimum that you can do. X, Y, and Z. Oh, but if you want to go deeper and deeper, you got to change these ball joints and this and this and that. This is going to be additional. And a lot of dudes don't want to do that. They'll just say, oh, man, just get them on, basically. But they won't do what it take to make it. 
how it's supposed to be. They'll just ride, and then when they get their car on the street, the first thing they're gonna say, oh man, my ball joint broke. Man, my lift messed up, man, I'm about to take it back to the shop. They played me. No, you didn't listen. You did what you wanted to do, and you ain't wanna spend the bread. Now your car only been outside for two weeks, and you was about to stunt and pull up on your people or pull up to the block party, and you thought you about to swing a dough and, and get your cap on, and your car broke down on you. But then you blame the shop, but you won't tell the people that you blame it. I mean, the people that you be around, that you blaming the shop around, you won't tell them that. No, hey man, the shop told me to change X, Y, and Z. They told me to do this and I ain't do it, so it's my bad for real. You ain't gonna tell them that. You just gonna tell them that you, that the shop messed your car up. And that's what be wrong with a lot of what be going on in this game. And that's why I break stuff down. When any customer that, that deal with me, they know that and they can tell you. It's, you know, the bare minimum is X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay, man, oh, we got that established. Oh, but if you need this and this and this and that, when I bust it down, then it's gonna be X, Y, and Z. Or if you just wanna eliminate that, just get it all. You can just get it all up front. Get everything up front. You ain't gotta wait until something breaks. Get it all new up front so you can minimize the potential of something breaking. You know what I'm saying? And it's just better that way. Spend the money right the first time. Spend it once. You ain't got to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I be trying to tell people. That's why I give them the opportunity to do. If they don't, I tell them off the rip. Hey, man, that, that, that lift ain't covered under X, Y, and Z. Like, if it's something that's my fault and I know it's my fault, okay, cool. If it's the shop fault, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll take care of that. But if it's something that you didn't do, that we told you to do, and you chose not to do that, I mean, you know, and I get it. Some people, money situations don't be up to par as the stuff that they want. That's respectable. But some people just think that this stuff's sweet. And they think they could just get it off like back in the day. Just strap some rims on and ride like, no. Nah. And even back in the day, them cars was breaking. But it's just a whole new day and it's a new age, man. Y'all got to get this stuff together. Do it right the first time. You can go coiled over so that way you can always have your adjustments, change your spring ratio, all that. You can, you can have the car really riding like you wanted to ride versus wanting this type of stuff with this type of quality. It don't work like that. If you want to ride like that, you got to buy that. And if you want to ride with the stock, you know, regular springs and shocks, you can still do that too. But man, change these bushings and these ball joints and change the studs, you know what I'm saying? These 50 year old studs, even though these half by 20, so these kind of thick, you know what I'm saying? But like other cars with like 7, 16 by 20 and all them little skinny, little studs and all that kind of crap, man. You, you add an extra weight. You put music in the car. You got the wrong lug nuts. You got like four threads worth a turn and then you wonder why your wheel fell off. You got 800 pounds of music. Your boys and your chicks riding in your car and you expect stuff to just still be the same. This is the type of stuff that you got to do to make these cars right, man. So I ain't about to keep talking y'all ear off, but that's just what I wanted to say. And I didn't even know I was about to say all that, but that's just something I wanted to let people know when y'all dealing with these cars. This is the reason why we do stuff like this. This is why we go brand new throughout the car, doing frame offs, body bushings, all this type of stuff, getting brand new suspension parts. This eliminate a lot of headache and this puts you ahead of the curve, even though cars still break, but you would be way more ahead of the game having stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? And just even changing the factory stuff and putting all brand new factory stuff on, your outcome gonna be better and your car gonna last longer. So then when you don't wanna do it, if you don't wanna buy that stuff, you don't wanna get what we saying, get, or like I said, I'd be like, hey man, look, we could change this, change that. And then you don't wanna get the ball joints. You don't wanna get the tie rods and center link and whatever, whatever, the ball joints, all that stuff like that. And when that stuff break, that's on you, not me, not special vehicles, not the shops that you choose to go to. 
when that stuff be messing up because you didn't want to do it the first time and it break and something go wrong man seal man hey man my car hey uh but i'm saying though i mean the money good ain't no paper shortage ain't no none of that but still at the same time this shouldn't even happen no it happened because you didn't do what was said even if you ignored the advice that was given to you because you think you know you're going to take your car to a shop and you're going to tell them what you want them to do okay bet i'm gonna do what you want to do but if it's going to be a headache for me i ain't doing it take it somewhere else and bet or if i did do it and and you think you telling me what to do and then something happened or you want to bring your own parts do your own thing okay bet whatever come out of that situation just know it was you it wasn't the shop and that's just a part of the game that need to be said more because it's a lot that, that it's always a shop blame don't nobody never really want to take the blame in just regular life but it's always the shop fault it's never the customer fault no the customer is not always right especially here i'm not gonna tell you i'm like man that's whack that's corny you shouldn't do that that's terrible Oh, you want me to do that? Sorry. No, nope, I'm not doing it. Take that to somewhere else. I'll do this and this and this and that. But you want to do that? No, I'm not doing that. Because you're not about to put my name on something that I'm not going to claim. Or that I'm not going to do. I mean, just it's just certain stuff that I just won't do. And it don't be about no money all the time. And that's what people be thinking, man. But I got the bread. No, nah, man. It's the attitude. It's the character behind it. It's the reason why you want to do that. I'm not doing. Certain stuff I'm just not doing. I don't want my name attached to that. I don't want my shop name attached to that. But at the same time, it's just how this stuff go, man. It's, a, it's some do's and don'ts. It's some pros and cons. And you got to know the differences. You got to choose wisely. And even with certain customers, like certain customers, I'm not even taking your car. Because I know dealing with you is a freaking headache. Or dealing with you is going to cost more. Because you got ter terrible character traits. So it ain't just fixing your car. I got to fix you along the way. I got to be the mechanic of your mind. And the way you act. So I'm doing more than fixing the car. So that costs. That's like when you go to court and they talk about uh, amounts of money for pain and suffering. That's what it be do. That's what it be dealing with some of these dudes in these shops. Some of y'all guys that be out here. Y'all be thinking y'all know everything because you listen to 15 homeboys and don't. And only one know something. The other 14 don't know nothing. And you listen to everybody but the person that's fixing your car. Got the suspension on there. Still gonna paint all this stuff though. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up and paint it. But I ain't put the sway bar on yet either. Still gotta clean that up or whatever. I'm put the new bushings on that. But yeah, everything on there. I ain't got the tie rods tight yet either. I just wanted to see how everything was gonna fit before I tighten up all this stuff. We got it done, got it on there. Global West Vikings. Go these on that bit. So yeah, man, about to put these rims on. See what this mud sitting like. I already did put my ride height where I wanted it to be, just as a starter. But I'm thinking that this where I got it at is a, at a good position. Consider this a big block car. And I think I got my my rate where I got it sitting at. I think it's sitting where in a good spot. I might not have to change that. I mean, I'm going to put these rims on, put it on the ground, see how I look. These cheese balls, Dayton's, Dayton's, Ohio, all golds, staggered. Back with this joint, 72 Dunk, Candy Red, we put the folds on there, Dayton's all gold, staggered. Like I said, we did all the new suspensions on there. Upper lower control arm, Global West, 
inner, outer tie rod, center link, outer arm, all that stuff. Just basically everything brand new on the front. As y'all seen in the other piece of this video, this is just the way to go. Get all that stuff out the way. 50 something year old car, man, make sure it feel brand new. And uh, we was supposed to paint the frame and everything on the car, but he wanted to wait because I sent you some update uh, pictures of the front suspension done. And he had wanted to paint the whole frame, you know, all that stuff like that. We don't know who was gonna do paint, pour 15, whatever he wanted to do. But uh -huh. we wind up not doing it because when I seen, sent him the update pictures, man wanna ride and I respect the game. I respect that, you know, he wanna ride. He can do that later during the winter or whenever he feel like it for real. As you can see, the mug looked good. We did the camber. I did an eye alignment. For those who know, I, I, I align with my eye real close to where it almost be like the place that do it. But I aligned it, did the camber on there, just put the skirts on. His skirts was rubbing. I don't know if you can see this right here. But when he first uh, tried the rim on, the inner skirt bolt that hold this trim on, uh -huh. It was touching on the tire, but it was touching from back here. So I had modified that a little bit so the trim could stay on, but still maintain the screws or whatever, but not touch the tire. You know what I'm saying? So you probably gonna get the tires touched up or whatever. Then I painted the sway bar. I'll show that right quick. Just a little touch right fast because this was looking a little dusty when I put them new bushings in there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Put the new bushings in them joints and painted the sway bar. You know what I'm saying? Everything new up under there. Like I say, he gonna touch this frame. So for all the other dunk riders and whoever else got something to say, don't count it out just because what you see today. That stuff gonna get touched. He just wanna ride for a minute. Enjoy his car. It's hot outside. Cleaning is 80, 90 degrees every day. And the man wanna drive his car. So I respect that. You know what I'm saying? But he did what was major for the car so far, so. Here you go, Blue. Still on go date. Right. And it's still candy, so. Right, so everything good. Work. About to pull it off, test, make sure ain't nothing rubbing, you know, let the body shake a little bit, see what's happening in the back, make sure everything's clear. You know, that's how we do, just to make sure it's a real street car, a real rideable car, not nothing. And that's another thing I want to say, too. I've been lifting cars for a lot of years. We've been lifting cars for years. Mm -hmm. Even customers that know this is what we do, been around for years, they ask, is it going to be able to drive on the street or the freeway? We're like, what? Why would anybody lift a car that can't ride on the freeway? What? That means whoever doing your lifts ain't doing what they supposed to be doing because you're not supposed to just have a car that only can ride on Up main and down society. your street. Yeah. You gotta have a car that ride on why every would, street. Why would you like, want to lift your car to only drive down your street? Yeah, and so back? we build everything that ever came off this shop and get on the freeway. Mm -hmm. Period. So that's just what it is. So when you come here, your car is gonna leave and be able to drive anywhere. That's it. So that's what we about to pull it off for. Make sure everything clear. All that. If we got to be some adjustments done. It's really just the skirts for real. I mean, we know everything else good, but we just gonna make sure the skirt's clear. If not, we're gonna have to modify the skirt again a little bit just to clear that tire so it don't rub up against that tire. But everything else good, so now we're about to pull this thing on up.
too, Dominic. What you think? Go cheesy things. Cheesy it is. Balls. Cheese it is, baby. Exactly where it's coming from. It's over here somewhere, but this side is a little bit closer for some reason. I'm gonna figure it out though. I want you to uh, drive right quick though. I'll, I'll take your phone. But I just want to hit the rim. Yeah. I just want to see it. Cause I hear it, but I need to see it. Just go straight. Matter of fact, just go straight up and down. Just go straight and then come right back. Don't even turn. Just go straight up and then come right back. I just want to see because I can I can hear it, but I need to see it. I think I know what it is. Like it was back in the day. This ain't the $4,500 
dunk days and seven thousand dollar box Chevys and all that that stuff over with. Yeah. So pull it back in the building. I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna go back up. Like I say, we just uh got to modify the skirts right quick. But like I say, that hook is like right there. So you can't do the hook but, but so much or the freaking skirt to fall off. So you got to make sure it's still got enough hook on there to hook, but without still rubbing the tire. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right quick. And pull back out one more time. Shoot it one more. But I'm just going to do both sides just to make sure. They both clear, even though I don't hear nothing from the driver's side, but you know, the dude that owned this car, he way bigger than me. Taller, bigger, everything. So I know when his weight get in here, whoever he riding with, you gotta accommodate for that too. You know what I'm saying? It, it ain't just I don't weigh that much. I weigh a lot, but I don't weigh that much. You know what I'm saying? But so we're gonna do this and that's it. See on that skirt. The hook, I just shaved it just a little bit. I just want to just clear it. I don't want to shave too much off of it. But there you go. Yeah, we in here watching CJ. I guess he just left uh, some car show or something. I don't know. But we in here watching that. That thing glowing. Like I say, I'm going to try this back on and see. Because I can eye it and see if it cleared. So pretty much know it's gonna clear because that's the only thing it was touching so yeah try this one back on right quick and do the other side just because i'm gonna do the other side just in, just because so it can match got them all done I'm uh, sitting so good. Yeah. 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 I got the skirts back on. I did it. I modified them. But I'm going to wait till tomorrow to put it back out. Godson league basketball game. Everybody go check that out. Don't mind that rust that come from the cutlass knocking the dust off that mud. Not because it was rotted out or nothing. It just that base got the hidden and started knocking rust all off that mud. I ain't sweep it up yet. That's what that did. So I just gotta sweep that little stuff up. But yeah, I'm done putting the skirts on. And everybody go watch this basketball game, man. We slide out this mug tomorrow. Special vehicles, the legend. Yeah, man. Like I said, we had to modify the uh, skirt or whatever. Had to hit the little hooks a little bit to clear it from touching on the tire or whatever. 
did that last night, but like I said, I had to make a run, go to my guy's uh, game or whatever. But now we're about to pull this thing on out. I think everything is done right. We ain't gonna have to bring it back in. So we just about to shoot the clip, do our little circle of donuts or whatever like that. Make sure everything's clear on the car. Call the man to come get his whip. See we all good from here.
about to be turning some heads, boy. enough curb and hill that you can test your parking lot abilities but yeah the mud ride good I got that alignment pretty squared on I got that mud sitting pretty decent I did the camber and alignment eye alignment anyway and um uh, Shoot, man, we back to the shop, man. Call the man, come get his whip. Everything feeling good, sounding good. I don't hear nothing. That uh, that skirt screw that was holding this trim on, that stuff ain't rubbing the tire no more. So we can get the tires touched up or whatever you need to do for that. But shoot, man, we back.
ready. But knowing I ain't about to play, that's torture. 
Yeah, man, special vehicles, we out. Yeah, he came to pick this thing on up. Oh, he don't want to be in the video, huh? <laughs> oh, hey, man, he called it, too. Uh, he called it. Yeah, that look good. That's gonna be hard. You get the steering wheel too? You gotta get the steering wheel now, nah, man. That's gonna look too good with that steering wheel in there. But then, you know, I, I did the, uh, when I turned the music on, somebody didn't even tune your music. I tuned it for you. So all that stuff good too now. Yeah, man, you good to go. I ain't even mess with the bass. What I did with the way that they had the the mids and stuff, it just wasn't, it was too flat. You ain't hear none of the highs, none of the snares, and none of that stuff. So I just cleaned it up from what it sounded like and then just boosted the signal a little bit. That was it. So yeah, you good now. Yeah, buddy. You got the mount to, book, to go back there already? Oh, you can't mount it with a convertible back there? They got to make a bracket that come out. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cheese ball. Yeah, that look good, though. But yeah, the music sound way better than what it did sound. Because as soon as I turned the radio on, I'm like, oh, heck no. Nah. I'll start do 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 Instantly, cause I it just I, I didn't want to turn it up with the speaker sounding that flat like that, cause you can blow speakers like that. So I did that real quick. That's it. But yeah, man, you good to go. Out of here.